Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the Main Machinist channel. I'm Jeremy here, and I want to talk to you today about collet blocks and more specifically using collet blocks with a lathe because I haven't seen many videos on that. I do see some pretty good videos on collet blocks in general, but if you're getting into indexing of any kind, collet blocks are a really easy, math free way for the most part to get into indexing, simple indexing processes. And especially, this video is really aimed at the home hobbyist guys, you, you know, maybe, and ladies, maybe you have a machine shop in your garage or in your basement, and you have a lathe, maybe you have a drill press, maybe you have a small milling machine, but um, you're, you're trying to get into more tooling, because we know it's all about tooling. This trade is all about tooling. You can get a machine and then you're gonna spend the rest of your time chasing tooling for the machine. So let's just take a quick look at these and then I'm gonna use them in the lathe with a milling attachment to show some neat things that you can do with collet blocks. So if you get a set of collet blocks, if you can make your own if you have a surface grinder and you have the ability to do that or for relatively inexpensive, you can get a set uh, from KBC Tools or MSC Direct or a number of different places um, that, that sell these and they usually come with two collet blocks you can see here and they are ground you know uh, square and parallel and everything else to make them um, an indexing feature and you can see just looking at these if you wanted to make you know a custom bolt or something like that and you wanted to put a hex head on it this will make it a lot easier to index so you can put your flats on something or if you want to, what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of round stock in a collet. This is a 5C collet block. Actually, you can look in this side. The 5C collet goes in here. And uh, we'll put a piece of round stock in with the milling attachment. And we'll put a set of flats on it that are, you know, opposite of each other. And see how easy it is to use it. So let me go set up my Logan 922 lathe, which is probably something similar to what a lot of the home hobby shops have. It's my smaller lathe. And we're going to throw these. We're gonna set up the milling attachment and then throw these in the milling attachment and do some fun stuff. I'll show you here how I have my setup. So I have the Palmgren 250 in the Logan 922 lathe. I put my collet chuck in the spindle and you can see that the Palmgren 250, if you're not familiar with this, it mounts directly to the tool post. Um, lock all your gibs down, make sure everything's tight, make sure this is rigid as possible because the Palmer 250 style of milling attachment has a lot of overhang here and you can get yourself into trouble very quick. Uh, for now, what I've done is I've indicated the Palmgren to the spindle with my Brown and Sharp best test. And normally I don't like to have the probe at extreme angles, but for our purposes today, this is a quick way to set this up just to show you guys. And I just went along the parallel and I'm feeding now. And I just indicated that in like you would indicate the Kurt vise over on the bridge port. Same concept. So now that we're set up, I'm gonna get my collet block. I'm gonna remove the parallel. Let's put the collet block in and we can put an end mill in the spindle and we'll do a little bit of um, milling. We are getting close to being fully set up here. And I have a quarter inch end mill in the spindle. I have a half inch piece of round stock in the collet block. And I put a piece of painter's tape on top of the material. What I'm gonna do now, you're gonna see me rotate the spindle back and forth like this until I'm just touching off the material when I see the tape begin to drag. Okay, I raised up the work until I've just begun to contact the end mill. Now what you're going to see now is we need to move the work up half the distance of the cutter so that the center line of the tool is at the top of the work. And we know we have a quarter inch end mill, so we're going to move 125 thousandths on the milling attachment to raise the work up to achieve that. Now, I there is 
or there are graduated lines <clears throat> on the milling attachment, but I prefer just to put an indicator on it. It's more accurate and it's a lot easier to find out what's going on. So now I'm gonna turn this, now that I've cleared the work from the end mill, and we're just gonna turn this up until the work has been raised 125 thousandths. Now we know that the tool center line is at the top of the work. Now, we also need to move, because I'm my goal here is to reach the center line of the work with the center line of the tool. And so I'm gonna go up another 250 thousandths because we are working with a half inch piece of material. So let's continue to raise up until we met that. And I'm at 250 thousandths. Let's take a look. And now from this vantage point, we can see that the tool itself is on the center line of the work. And we can go ahead and make a cut. Now what we're gonna do this time is I'd like to just use the call it block to put a set of flats on this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a set of 7 16 flats so that we could put a 7 16 wrench on this material. If, if this was some kind of a um, custom made bolt or something that was a part of a tool or anything that you can imagine that required a 7 16 flat on it, we're gonna put that on this material now. And the collet block is gonna allow us, once we make our first cut and finish this side, we'll just be able to index this perfectly by loosening the milling attachment jaws, flipping this around, tightening it, and it'll be right back into position. So let's go ahead here and make a cut. Okay, and here's our math for the job. We have a half inch piece of material. We want 7 16 flats on it. So we need to remove a total of 62 and a half thousandths uh, 62 and a half thousandths divided by two because we're going to take it off per side leaves us with about 31 thousandths per side to remove. I decided I want my flats to be three inch, uh, three eighths of an inch long along the piece of the material. So the cutter is a quarter of an inch. So 375 minus 250 means we're going to travel 125 thousandths on our cross feed in order to obtain the three eighths wide flats. Let's go ahead and do it. I shut off my overhead light so you can see the dials a little bit better. I am very close to touching off here. What I've decided to do is we're going to use the carriage for the infeed. So I have a indicator set up on my carriage here. When we begin to touch off, I'm going to set my zero and then we'll move over the 31 and a half thousandths using the travel dial. And we are then going to move 125 thousandths on the cross feed watching this indicator. And that will, um, Give us what we want to have for a result. Flip her around, make the same cut. We'll be ready to go. Okay, I can hear that it is touching. Let's set our zero. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move in 20 thousandths to begin with here. We are plunging in. We have hit our 20 thousandths. Add some oil. We're gonna move our 125 thousandths. We could use power feed, but I'm gonna do this by hand. And we do get some vibration even in the dial. 
We're gonna have to watch for that. Okay, I've made it. And now I'll follow my indicator at the top. And what we're gonna do is, we need to move that cutter to get a complete flat. So let's go ahead. Our 125 there. Now we're moving the work piece again. And we're gonna return now to the starting point. All right, with that side done, now what we're gonna do is, I'm going to unlock my carriage. And I'm gonna move this carriage away from the tool. Remember that zero is the point where we had touched off. And I'm just gonna move it away a hundred thousandths. So we get enough room to take things in and out. Let's remove the collet block. But before we do that, I'm gonna set an indicator. And there's ways you could do this. This is how I'm choosing to do it this time. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my indicator at a zero here, so that I can slide the collar block out, reverse it, bring it back in to the same point. With the milling attachment jaws loosened and my zero set, I can now come here I can slide out the work. All right, you can see now that the flat is there. I have um, partially deburred this. We'll deburr it better in the end. Let's go put it back in the machine and cut the opposite side. Now the cool thing about the call block is we had it in this orientation. Now to do the opposite flat, all I have to do is index the block and we will have a um, you know, perfectly parallel cut on this side. So let me go ahead and reinstall the block. And remember, I set a zero here. So that I can put the collar block back to the same place. I could have done other things. I could have just set up a stop or whatever, but since I had the indicator right here in handy, why not just do it this way? Now we are gonna move back using our carriage dial. Remember we're a hundred thousandths away. So let's unlock the carriage. We're gonna move back. Here's that zero. You can hear it starting to chirp. Let's go again, 20 thousandths. I'm gonna let you see the tool better this time. I'm watching my cross feed dial. Okay, we'll move the carriage. Let's take out our part. Go deburr it. Okay. 
Here's the finished product. We have our flats. Our 7 16 wrench goes on, gives us a little bit of clearance for the wrench there. I'm happy with this. And you can see how the collar blocks work. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how a collar block can be used on a lathe to mill features. I'm not gonna go ahead and demonstrate this one. It's the same exact process, just takes a little bit more time. What you would probably do then is if, let's say you wanted uh, to make a custom bolt, you would turn this down, this diameter down, You'd leave this larger, large enough that whatever size bolt you were going to make or hex you, shape you wanted to make, you could do that and have, um, you know, you can kind of put that together in your own mind. So uh, thanks for watching as always. If there's anything else you'd like to see, especially in the old fashioned machine shop work like this, let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know if you learned anything from this and, and what you'd like to see in the future. Thank you again. This is Jeremy at Hilt's Machine Works.